Church of the Epiphany. Welcome uh, to my backyard. I thought we would be outside this morning. It's just such a beautiful day um, and the trees are budding and the colors are beautiful. So um, welcome to worship outside this morning. A couple of announcements before we begin. Uh, take a look at all of the announcements that are printed in the bulletin. Um, and one of them that is there is particularly important. Um, we are beginning a brand new ministry at Epiphany, uh, providing meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner every Sunday beginning in late May uh, to a group of 18 homeless folks who live in Pawtucket through the Open Doors Rhode Island program. Uh, we have had a wonderful response. We've got a half a dozen of you who have filled out our survey and expressed interest in helping. We could use another six or eight or even 10 individuals or families. There are multiple ways to help, uh, whether it is actually making those bags of meals, whether it's delivering them, whether it's bringing um, some food and supplies to another person who may want to make the bags but can't get the materials to put in them. So there are a number of ways um, to help out. Take a look at the link that is provided in the announcements and in the e-news this week. Um, finally, don't forget uh, to come to our virtual coffee hour at 10 a.m. Uh, the link to that Zoom meeting is in your Sunday e-news that you received this morning. One of the Epiphany Star words that I picked out and highlighted this week, the words that guide us, uh, was comfort. And so as we begin worship, I would invite you um, into a place of comfort for yourself if you have that at home. And whatever comfort means to you, whether it is a warm cup of coffee or tea, whether it is uh, wrapping yourself in a blanket, whether it's sitting in your favorite chair or lighting a candle, um, whether it's having a favorite pet beside you, um, whatever comfort means to you in this moment, I would invite you to surround yourself with those things. Uh, as we come into this peaceful presence for worship, as we hear um, the word of God, as we sing, um, our hymns and our songs as we offer our prayers, uh, I would just invite you into a place of comfort. And I think God would invite you and meet you there as well. So wherever you have been this week, whatever this morning, this week, this day has held for you, know that you are welcome here. You are welcome always in God's presence. Let us worship. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, see, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set, for you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant, and in your loving kindness, save me. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. But Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. But Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. And Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I offer this to you in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 
So this gospel, John 14, I have one major association with. This is always the gospel, well maybe not always, maybe 75% of the time. This is the gospel that is chosen to be read at funerals and memorial services that I have presided at. So the likelihood is that you have heard some version of my sermon on this gospel if you have been to a funeral service here. Um, but the sermon generally goes something like this, that Jesus promises in this chapter of John's gospel that he has gone to prepare a place for all of us and will bring us to himself. So it is deeply comforting for uh, the families who have lost a loved one to know that um, God has brought their loved one to the place prepared for them in heaven and they now rest there in peace. So that's my sermon on this gospel story. So this week I had to sit and think a little while about a different sermon for this gospel um, and a different sermon for this Sunday. And so I started um, right with the first line. Do not let your hearts be troubled, Jesus says. And I think it's kind of too late for that. I think our hearts already are troubled. I think the disciples' hearts are troubled. And I don't think Jesus telling them not to be does anything to change that. They already know that this is coming to the end of John's Gospel and the authorities are getting wind of what Jesus is doing and he is about to be arrested and handed over and crucified. So their hearts are definitely troubled. And whether it's in a difficult time in my life or whether it is you know, right now, I and all of us, I think, find our hearts troubled about many things. And Jesus saying, do not let your hearts be troubled is sort of like telling someone, well, don't worry, it'll be fine. That never makes them worry any less. It never makes me worry any less. So I, I kept going. And Jesus says, well, believe in God, believe also in me. And so here again, I, I can believe in God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit with all of my heart, but my heart still gets troubled. I think it's true that we can have all the belief and all the faith we want and still we worry and we find ourselves deeply troubled. And it's not that we don't have enough faith. It's just that we are human and God knows that. And so I kept looking further and Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. And to me, this notion of Jesus as the way is where my heart landed. And it is true that by the end of uh, the book of Acts, the followers of Jesus, the earliest apostles and disciples and the growing community, um, were known as the people of the way. The word Christians wasn't used for a very long time as a label. They were known as the people of the way. Jesus called himself the way. He says, I am the very path and the road that you walk. We are called to be pilgrims and travelers on this journey of life. And Jesus is saying to us, I'm not a single answer. I'm not a single way of believing. I'm not a problem to be solved. And that once you've figured it out, life will be okay. Jesus is saying to them, life will go on and your hearts will be troubled and the road will get windy and twisty and bumpy and you won't be able to see the end of it. But know that I am not far. In fact, know that I am that very road. All of our lives are holy. All of our lives are journeys to be more like Christ, to live in the way of love and justice that he showed us how to love our neighbor well, how to act with kindness and mercy and justice. Jesus is the way, a way of life, a way of being through all of our lives. And I think that's helpful to remember that God is not something that we can conjure up with a set of practices or choices or things that we do because then that means that we somehow control God. That, well, if I just pray more, then God will be with me more. And while prayer opens up for us a deep well of wisdom and a deep connection with God, God is always with us. Psalm 31 this morning says, um, well, the psalmist prays, 
all of my times are in your hands, O God. That all of our times, every step of our journey, is in God's hands. Not just the times that we attend worship, or that we pray, or that we read the Bible, but all of our days and all of our times are times of working and sleeping, our times of doing chores and dishes and laundry, our times of working in the garden and around the house, our times of just sitting quietly, all of our times are in God's hands because Jesus is the way. So I, I think a lot of things change once we understand what Jesus is saying that he is the very path of our lives. And we are the pilgrims who travel that path. And it occurs to me that there are a couple of ways to journey. That whenever I have traveled before and gone to a different country or a different city or a new place, I can either be a tourist or I can be a traveler. And I've been both at different times and both have their right and good times and places. But to be a tourist, the word tour actually means kind of to encircle, to go around. And to be a tourist kind of means that you're following a plan and you follow a guidebook and you go to a certain place at a certain time and you see these famous places and you take pictures of them and then you go and rest in your hotel at night. Being a traveler has a little bit more to me of kind of letting the map go and seeing what you experience along the way and seeing who you meet and what surprises you. And when I've done that, there have been some wonderful surprises and God has met me in these strangers in new countries and I have been able to see things I wouldn't have expected or I wouldn't have known about if I had just stuck on the usual path. So I think this, this whole time this time that we find ourselves in is kind of calling us to be travelers because the truth is we don't really have a map or a guidebook um, for how to do this and we kind of only know the next few steps at a time and so that's all we can do we can kind of live the next couple of days or the week and that's kind of how we're doing things right now and it feels a lot like being a traveler and less like being a tourist we don't have a plan, but we kind of just have to keep walking step by step and trusting that God is there along the way each and every step and we don't have to see the destination and we don't even necessarily need to see completely down the road right now. But we can trust that we don't travel alone, we travel with a community of people and thanks be to God for these electronic ways of connecting and thanks be to God for phone calls and for packages dropped at our doorsteps so that's all the ways that we are journeying together on this road in this way. And Jesus has given us the tools we need, just like he gave the disciples the tools they needed. He said, I've shown you the Father. I've shown you what you need to know. I've shown you how to love. I've shown you how to heal people who are not well. I've shown you how to be a community. So we have what we need. God has showed us that in the parables and the gospels and the stories and so now we just have to kind of embrace the task of being a traveler on the way knowing that Jesus is the very way and the truth and the life and we keep using the tools that he has given us the tools of prayer and of service and most of all the way of love after all we are people of the way and we'll keep walking this way knowing that God walks with us. Amen. to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, 
for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For the leaders of all churches. For all who serve God in the church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life especially for all mothers and the ministry of those who are like mothers to us. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, remembering especially Peggy O'Toole and Betty Haratunian, who died this week and Joyce and Eugene Dench, in whose memory a do donation has been made to Epiphany, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. These and all our prayers we entrust to the never-failing mercy and love of Jesus Christ our Lord. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Peace before us, peace behind us, peace under our feet. Peace within us, peace over us. Let all around us be peace. May the peace of the risen Lord be always with you. And may Almighty God, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen.